It's commonly accepted that war is one of the biggest drivers of societal advancements. Whether it's advancements in technology, science, engineering, or medicine, these come both as a desire to do better on a war front, such as deadlier weapons, faster computers, and more reliable equipment, but also as a way to invent new products to recreate an already established product with different materials, as the production war machines may use up the supply of steel, rubber, and tin. This was especially major in World War II. For example, we developed chemical food preservatives during World War II. Famine was widespread, and we needed a way to ensure that the soldiers on the front lines could get unspoiled food delivered. Before the war, our methods of preserving was really just salting, canning, drying, or fermenting. But the war taught us how to use chemistry to preserve food. These same food preservation techniques are still used today, and variations of that work has gone on to spawn home sanitary supplies. Many of the peaceful inventions that were created following major wars have their roots in war technology. A frequently cited example of this is the radar. Its purpose during World War II was to alert the Allied powers of approaching enemy combatants. It has led to the inventions of the microwave, X-ray imaging, weather surveillance, and GPS satellites. Even though the creation of radar was arguably the best example of wartime research finding its way into everyday civilian life, I wanted to make this video about mustard gas. Mustard gas earned its infamy in the trenches of World War I, where the Germans used it to cause immensely painful burns and blisters. It was an absolute terror during the war. Its torturous side effects, on top of its ability to absorb into soil and people's clothing, and spread through physical contact, kept the Allied soldiers on a paranoid state of constant vigilance. Despite its name, mustard gas isn't actually a gas, but a thick oily liquid. When exposed, the weapon would strip the bronchial tubes of its mucus. Soldiers would be blinded, and their throats would constrict, forcing them to fight for every single breath. Mustard gas's intended purpose was to disable infantry, not cause death. But high exposure would lead to an excruciatingly slow and painful demise. The heavy use of mustard gas during the war incentivized the Allied powers to pour huge funding into discovering the cocktail's properties and dampering its effects. The Allied powers were eventually able to recreate the weapon and in turn use it on the Axis powers. Because of all this attention, researchers gained an understanding of mustard gas unrivaled among chemical weapons. And that's where the story takes an interesting turn. Because it turns out that mustard gas, a chemical compound made to induce intolerable levels of pain, a compound that directly caused more than 90,000 deaths, could be used to help fight against humanity's second largest killer, cancer. Autopsies on dead servicemen found that exposure to mustard gas decreased their white blood cells counts. Or in other words, mustard gas can be used to kill the cells in the body. And if it can be used to destroy healthy cells, then it might also be able to be used to destroy unhealthy cells. This was really the entire precursor to what's known today as chemotherapy. The idea of modern day chemotherapy is that we nuke all the cells in the sick person's body, with the hope being that the treatment will kill enough cancer cells to send the patient to remission, but also leave enough healthy cells to keep the patient alive. Scientists have known the potential of a mustard gas variant being used to treat cancer since 1919. So in 1942, doctors Louise Goodman and Alfred Gilman synthesized a derivative of mustard gas. Instead of chlorine and sulfur, this new compound was chlorine and nitrogen, nicknamed nitrogen mustard. This is the part where I introduce the next character in the story, a semi-anonymous man, known today by his initials, J.D. J.D. had developed severe lymphoma. It was so bad, he couldn't even fold his arms over his chest. The massive tumor in his jaw made it nigh impossible for him to eat and sleep. So with nowhere left to turn, he became the first guinea pig to test the effects of nitrogen mustard on August 27, 1942. The nitrogen mustard treatment was an immense success. After several treatments of nitrogen mustard, JD was able to eat, swallow, and sleep. The pain gradually faded away, and with each subsequent injection, JD grew more and more comfortable. This was the first ever recorded incident of chemotherapy treatment. JD died on December of 1942 about six months after his lymphoma treatment started. He passed not knowing the colossal impact he had on the medical world.